Despite being a movement in music, fashion, and culture for 50 years, there are very few films that depict punk accurately. In fact, most films using punk as their subject seem to aim for parody much more often than they attempt to accurately portray it. For every green room, there are 10 Spinal Tap style screen depictions. Why is it so difficult to capture punk music on screen? Well, probably because punk tries to make itself as difficult to capture as possible. You gotta be there. Music is for effect. It's time and aggression. Technical wizardry. And it's shared live. And then it's over. Energy can't last. From its outset, punk was a reaction to the excesses of prog and stadium rock of the 60s and 70s. This is best illustrated when you compare any picture of bands like Yes or Emerson, Lake and Palmer to a photo of a show at even the best known punk clubs like CBGB in New York. While fast, short, and loud became hallmarks of the genre in its early days, it also ensured that punk music was not going to be for everyone. Even more so, the fact that punk styled themselves as outsiders made it purposefully alienating for your average music fan. And as hardcore and post-punk created increasingly insular scenes, most of punk music became more difficult to access for your average music fan. Because punk began as music that was intentionally out of reach to your average fan, almost none of even punk's biggest acts entered the popular consciousness the way other rock bands did. Kiss making appearances on Family Guy works because its most casual viewer is generally aware of at least a few Kiss songs, the stage makeup, and probably even some of the group dynamics. You know, like Gene Simmons being a self-absorbed rock star, or Peter Criss being in the butt of the joke. Could any punk act make a similar claim? The Misfits have a recognizable logo, but an average Joe probably wouldn't know any of their songs. Most people could name Iggy Pop as the singer of the Stooges, but could they identify anyone else? What you're left with is the Ramones and Sex Pistols, two bands that are left to represent an entire swath of musical history that most people could name maybe a member or two, recognize the logo in the band, and hum a few songs. That's how you get Spock Vulcan, neck-pinching a leather jacket-clad mohawked punk listening to a song vaguely reminiscent of God Save the Queen. Punk's definition has also changed regularly, making it a zeitgeist that's extra difficult to capture for filmmakers. Adjacent genres of music have hardly had as much fundamental change to them as punk has. While not entirely the same as they were a few decades ago, one can watch a concert film from the 70s or 80s and have it feel very much the same as seeing a stadium show on film today. This goes for fictional depictions of the genre as well. An almost famous, Cameron Crowe follows his fictional band Stillwater on a cross-country tour opening for Black Sabbath. Though it takes place in 1973, the concert scenes feel nearly identical to those that are depicted in the 1980s era Queen sections of Bohemian Rhapsody, or the real-life concert footage of the White Stripes in their 2010 tour doc, Under the Great Northern Lights. By comparison, the show scenes from SLC Punk feel vastly different compared to the DIY shows now. They may be great examples of what it felt like to attend a show in the 80s, uh, the decline of Western civilization corroborates that, but in terms of the types of people at the show, the music played, the clothes worn, and the general vibe, it's almost unrecognizable to a 2019 show. Since it's so difficult to document, a good punk movie feels all the more special when it does come around and makes an accurate picture worth your time and money. No way. That is so punk rock. 